Look at these magazine ads. These are from the 1970s that appeared in Time and Life magazine. You see this? Read them. They're claiming essentially that sugar's healthy and, in fact, an effective weight loss tool. We, we shaped our notion of healthy diets for decades on this. Don't ever eat fat. Sugar, no problem. Well, now an alarming new report finds the sugar industry may have paid Harvard researchers to make some of these claims. Dr. Kristen Kearns is the whistleblower behind these findings, now joins us on the phone. First of all, this is shocking news for a lot of people who've read these headlines. What led you to even look into this possibility and what did you find um, as you, you sort of linked these two things? Well, I'm trained as a dentist, and I was at a dental conference back in 2007, which was on diabetes, and it was helping train dentists on how to help manage diabetic patients that showed up in their practice. And nobody was talking about reducing sugar consumption to manage diabetes, which I found very strange, so much so that I approached one of the keynote speakers about it, and he said, well, there is no evidence linking sugar to chronic disease. And I just couldn't believe that that was his answer. And it just made me think that maybe there was some sort of uh, industry influence over what we were talking about for managing diabetes. And that led me on a search to, to understand some of these industry practices. So when you uncovered this, did, did you feel like this was truly just the heavy hand of industry? Yeah, the, the documents are pretty revealing. I mean, I was able to find correspondence going back and forth between the actual industry representatives and the Harvard researchers, and it documents the money that they paid to them. Uh, you know, the industry was helping them set the objective behind the study. They were giving the Harvard researchers articles that they wanted to critique to make sugar look like it was okay. Uh, so there was a lot of involvement behind the scenes between the industry and the researchers that, you know, really is not on the up and up. I'm troubled by this for so many reasons. And the reason is that we've gotten to a place, I always say sugar itself is not evil, but in too great of a quantities, it's truly toxic. It's in many ways, you could consider just as bad as cigarette smoking. And to think of all of the carnage that we've seen in this country over the last few decades, the rates of obesity and chronic illness, the rates of diabetes, and to think that this may be because researchers were paid off by industry, this is uh, this is one of the more troubling things I've heard as a doctor. Well, well, I think it's really troubling on so many levels because these researchers were being told what to write. As, yes. as you know, they were actually sending drafts of their article back and forth between representatives of the sugar industry. And I think it underscores a much larger problem in medicine in, in these studies right now because there is so many pharmaceutical companies sponsoring research, there's so many industry interests, and really until 1984, Big journals like the New England Journal of Medicine didn't even require the authors of an article to disclose mm. who was funding the study or if there were any any conflicts of interest. You know, disclosure is a, is a step in the right direction, but that doesn't solve the problem 100% because if you're being paid to do research by somebody and they expect a certain conclusion that that's problematic and we we continue to see I, it I think in the pharmaceutical you have the, the outcome industry. being linked with who's paying for this I mean, study there, there's a true I mean, the good news is, there it's a problem there are more organizations that are looking more closely at claims that products are making have been made and they're being made now that we have to put how much sugar is in things and how many calories are in things etc so it has gotten better well things have changed quite a bit just in the last decade alone since we started hosting this show we're finally saying things like okay you know fat can be healthy part of your diet but it took it took us a long time it probably took two or three years on this show for people to start believing us dr kearns i wanted to ask you one quick question before we let you go is there any fallout for either individuals involved companies involved i'm just curious well i'm not a lawyer and the time period that we were looking at uh, no one is alive anymore but I will say that there's a lot more to uncover, and these trade groups have been active for decades, and they're still active. So I think there's going to be a lot more to the story, and I think you're right to be asking those kinds of questions. Well, we appreciate you sharing your findings with us. <laughs> certainly an eye-opener, and I, I do think a takeaway, and look, we've been doing this for a long time on the show, and what we try to do in general is give you our best opinion when a new study comes out. But the fact of the matter is, we're not always going to get it right. We don't always know. You get these findings, you present them, but you, you can never be certain. And that's why we say 
take it with a grain of salt.